all for the glory of God. Amen. Everything works together for good to them, those who call upon him and those who wait upon him. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful opportunity. Greetings to all in the name of Jesus Christ, and especially thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity, and the elders, and all those who are serving God, and above all, each one of you, you are the children of the living God. Amen? Amen. Yes, that's where we must belong, and that's our position on this earth. We are saints of God, we are children of God, we are followers of Jesus Christ, we are faithful, we are chosen, and we have got a lot of work to do, and that's what we have been called upon. Thanks be to God in Jesus' name for his indescribable gift, that is Jesus Christ. We are going through a series of the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord, your God. Let there be no graven image or no idols. And then thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God in vain. And today we will see the fourth commandment from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I'll be using the NIV version. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember to keep it holy. The five areas of Sabbath I like to share this evening. Just a thought of uh, what God had in mind when he instituted the Sabbath. The first one is God's purpose of Sabbath. The second one, biblical perspective to the Sabbath. And the third one, what are some practical implications of our lives under the Sabbath command. Now, where did these observations go? The fourth one. And the fifth one is the Sabbath rest. So we'll go through these five important areas on this fourth commandment. The Ten Commandments God gave so that sin will be revealed. <coughs> More than 2,350 years, plus minus 50 years. Of course, there was commands, there were precepts, there were statutes. But it was not much recorded, but one man fulfilled that one. It was to improve the quality of life that God gave this particular command of Sabbath. Improve the wholeness of life which God had instituted for that purpose, he has created man. Ultimately, that will affect our personal life, our family life, society life, and of course, the church life, the body, the bride of Christ Jesus. And once we understand this, both it will be a life-changing and the world-changing. It just needs a believer to bow down his head, kneel down and pray to God and fulfill the requirements that are written in the whole word of God. Of course, it takes life and time. But what it requires is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him at this time so that we will understand the basic truth of the word of God. The fourth commandment reads like this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 onwards. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. Isaiah 58, 13 to 14 also goes on to read like this. Covering more than 800 long years. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, 
and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure. Isaiah 58, 13 to 14. Nor speaking thine own words, teaching the people of Israel to know God. So the entire purpose of the Sabbath day is to know our God and to understand that why did he institute this. We'll read uh, Psalm 92, verses 1 to 10, in IV version, Psalm 92, 1 to 10. It's a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to praise the Lord, Psalm 92 from the NIV. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord! How profound your thoughts! The senseless man does not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be forever destroyed. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever, for surely your enemies, O Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured upon me. Here are six reasons why it is so important. Why the Sabbath was instituted by God and uh, he held it as a prime. Firstly, it is uniquely, it will elevate the human race. Constantly, we are in the move. Constantly, we are working. Constantly, we are doing mechanical work. We need to have focus. It will elevate from a sense of work to a sense of joy that will bring life overwhelming within us and the strength to do our course or the routine requirement of our day. Thanks be to God for the different timings that we have. But biblically speaking, it is morning sunrise to sunset is the work. Thanks be to God who has morning to afternoon shift. Thanks be to God who has even, evening to night shift. But this is what God had instituted to seize on the seventh day to take rest. Second, we need to make this day very holy. And all through the biblical Old Testament requirement, there was a time to spend with God and with family. Third, the Sabbath reminds people that they are meant to be free. We are meant to be free. Many work five days a week. Many work six days a week. Many work seven days a week. But this was what was instituted by God that six days you work, and on the seventh day, you take rest. It's reminding about the people of Israel in Deuteronomy. It states like this, remember that you were slaves in Egypt and cannot have a Sabbath. Only free men and women can have. So you can understand the Sabbath being instituted by God to spend that day with the Heavenly Father, to the Creator, to spend a genuine, interesting, supporting life with our Lord Jesus Christ. Spending much time reading the word of God and praying. And that's what, what instituted by God. In light of this, there are essential slaves doing for work. And there are slaves for money, probably a rich slave. But God had a clear-cut command, which has been instituted. Six days you work, seventh day you take rest. The fourth point is, Bible is the only living word that openly declares the abo abolishing of slavery. Many are working continuous. But little do we have time for our God. 
The only reason God instituted is to remember him. He longs to be in the company of his created human beings. He longs to be adored, honored, and lifted up, and enabled, and praised. And that's what he expects of his children. The fifth point on this Sabbath is single-handedly creates and strengthens family bonds. When we see the bus passing by, let's say 30, 40 years before, they were all seeing outside. Now when you pass, see the bus passing by, we have our mobiles all head down, bow down. That will be the scene. This is the current situation I'm talking about. He knew everything beforehand, before time. How many minutes do we spend with our family? Texting, video chatting, but seeing person to person, talking to, of course, we are away from our home. That's the only source of at least, thank God, this opportunity. But the requirement is to spend more time with the family and to praise God for everything that God has done for that family. That's what was instituted in the Old Testament time. Bonding was so strong in the families. The spiritual bonding became more stronger because they have to go each Sabbath to the house of God. And that's where the family institutions started to get stronger. The Sabbath commandment granted the animals also rest. Animals was also one of, this was probably the only fundamental human rights and animal rights law which no man can give them. So God already had in mind that these are the most important reasons. So the point number two, we will see the biblical perspective to the Sabbath. The Sabbath day is an ordinance created or allowed during the creation time. In the Garden of Eden, God worked six days and put the man he created in the garden. And then he instituted work. See, this is the biblical perspective. And along with this gave the, came the command to take rest on the seventh, seventh day. This is a prescriptive command. Relates to the marriage as well as to the Sabbath. A requirement that God himself did it and showed it. The Sabbath day was, was observed prior to the Mount Sinai the Ten Commandments. Right from God himself rested till Abraham. I'll give you that verse. Genesis 26, 5. More than 2,350 plus minus 50 years. There were commands. If you read, Abraham kept God's requirement, law, commands, and precepts. So this particular verse sums up the 2,350 long years that there were commands, there were precepts, there were rules, and Abraham followed. And God confidently said he will follow and make his household to follow. That's why God chose this man of God. Then came the gathering of the manna for six days. So on the seventh day, do not gather. It will go stale. Many people tried and it became stale. So on six days, on the sixth day, they gathered for the seventh day. Enjoyed the rest of Sabbath. <clears throat> then came the Ten Commandments, written on the tablet of stone, with the finger of God. The fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It continues till Jesus' times, and it continues till the apostles, somewhere in the, in the period of the Maccabees, somewhere around 120 years, this was lost. 
The third point, the Sabbath commandment, which makes it perpetually binding and the moral law. It is to be remembered. The Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God. Note the point, remember that it was written by the finger of God on the tablet of stones. It was given with the display of God's power on Mount Sinai. I will read that verse, God gave the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai with loud thunder, flashes of lightning, a thick cloud and a very loud trumpet blast according to Exodus 19.16. The Ten Commandments. What was in the Ark of the Covenant? If you have read your Mosaic Law and the Ark of the Covenant, inside that Ark of the Covenant are the two tablet stones of Ten Commandments and the pot containing the manna, remembering that God fed them for how many years? Forty long years. And Aaron's raw, uh, Aaron's staff that was but dead. So these three things are inside the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, why was this given? According to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 3 and 4, all three items kept inside the Ark with the tablet of stones inside the Ark of the Covenant. It's a reminder for the people of Israel when they see the Ark of the Covenant, when the priest will take in front of them when they cross the borders, or when they go for war. It's a reminder that God was on their side. It was a reminder that God dealt with them. It was a reminder that God fought the battles for them. It was a reminder for you and me that God was on my side. Without my God, I would have been nothing. Remember from where he lifted you up. Remember the kindness of God. That is what is most important in our lives. That's where the Sabbath was instituted. Just to remember, give accounts to your God. Where are you placed? If you are comfortably placed, thank God. If you have not been placed, even that, thank God. Because God watches over you. You are in the house of God. You are in the right place. What it requires is a time to spend with your God. Giving Him the accounts. Tell everything to God in prayer. Open out everything, whatever is disturbing, whatever is joy, let it be known to your God. All the other laws were rolled up in a scroll and according to Deuteronomy 31, 24 to 26, take this book of the law and put it by the side of the Ark of the Covenant. All the other laws, 629 in the Old Testament, 1029 in the New Testament. All these kept aside the Ark of the Covenant that we have to read and we have to learn and we have to put it into practice. But there's three important. The one of these Ten Commandments is the Sabbath, which is kept as a reminder that we belong to our God and it's our, our prerequisite to go to our God. Not when times are bad, but when times are good too. When the, it's so interesting that Jesus came in the flesh to seek and to save all those who were lost and build the kingdom of Christ and he will take to the kingdom of God one day. And that's what is our reminder all about. That we need to stay. We need to remember what God has done for us in our lives. The Sabbath commandment is written for the new covenant members, because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, we become the new covenant. Romans 7, 6 says, it's not written on the old covenant now, but it's, it's a new way of the spirit that we live with the help of the word of God and with the urge and unction of the Holy Spirit. And that's how is the New Testament covenant members are all about. We are the children of the living God, the children of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. And everything transformed after that. In the Old Testament, the commandments were written in the tablet of the stone. In the New Testament, Jeremiah's prophecy comes true in Hebrews. That it is written in the tablet of our mind, tablet of our heart. So that we remember him often. We remember him every situation. We ask God's help in all circumstances. 
circumstances doesn't determine that there is a God. There is always a God and it's my circumstances, that's all. And how we look up to our circumstances and tell everything to the Lord in prayer and He will have mercy upon us. And He's, he's very gracious, He's loving, He's compassionate, He's kind. He knows that we are weak and that's where our God is. And that's why Paul goes on to write that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus because of the word that is written in our heart, written on the tablet of our mind. What comes to our memory when there is a situation? What comes to our mind when we are undergoing any trouble or circumstances? Is it the words that we read or is it the ideas or the escape route or the experience that we have? It is better the word I have kept in my heart. David goes on to say, this word is going to judge us one day. Jesus is going to judge us according to the word. And better, let us read the word of God and meditate. What are some of the practical implications of our lives under the Sabbath command? Am I observing a time of rest with my God? Am I spending a day at least or half a day, a few hours at least? Because according to the biblical requirement in the Old Testament, it's a one full day, seven day, uh, seventh day. You have to spend the whole day. But in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 12, verse 1, you remember when the disciples were walking with Jesus and in, the, in the corn uh, field and they plucked some corn and ate and the Pharisees said, don't your disciples fast? Don't they have the Sabbath? And the interesting part of Jesus' answer was, Matthew 12, 8, goes on to read like this, For the Son of Man is Lord even on the Sabbath day. Little did the people of Israel remember that we are doing this Sabbath in order to make our God happy, joyful. And little did they know, they forgot that the God of all glory in the form of Jesus the Son came into this world. He's walking in front of them. The teachers of the law, the Pharisees and the Sadducees did not recognize. They forgot what was written in the law. They were more on the outside, more on the practical issues rather than waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for a king, but Jesus is the king of kings. But he came to seek and to save all those who were lost. Jesus was the Lord of the Sabbath. They did not see that one. That's how many times we are now. Thanks be to God for the word that God has given to us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that he has given to us as a comforter. That he has not left us as orphans. We've got a great big wonderful God in us. We've got a heavenly father. We've got a savior who has saved us from the wretchedness of sin. And our souls from being totally destroyed. Thanks be to God for the Holy Spirit that he has given to us. So that he leads, he guides. A whole day unto the Lord. How is our personal life with our God on that time that you spent? We really need to spend time with our God. Time with our family. In the Old Testament, according to Numbers 28, 9 to 10, I will read like this. On the Sabbath day, make an offering of two lambs a year old without defect. So on the Sabbath day, they have to go to the temple and make an offering of two lambs a year old without defect together with its drink offering and a grain offering of two-tenths of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with olive oil. There were many thanksgiving offerings for the weekly beginning and in the course of the week which God has blessed them in their work of their hands, they have to bring it and put the offerings. This is the burnt offering for every Sabbath in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. Do I get my work done on six days of the week so I can rest spiritually? Take an account to my God and to my own self. Take an account of my family. Those rigid laws are passed by because Jesus came into the picture. 
But how much time do we spend? Do we really read the word of God and meditate on it day and night? He will be like the tree planted by the rivers of water which will yield its fruit in all seasons. Or is it just we are reading the word of God and praying and then going? Seek diligently as a treasure, Paul is writing. Search the scripture as though you are finding treasure. It's a big ocean. It will never stop till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sky is not the limit for us. We go beyond the sky. Amen? Amen? We go beyond the sky. So there is no limit. Spend time. Read the word. Write down. Your home, med home personal meditation system must become strong that day. Spend time. Give at least five, five, six hours. I know it's very difficult, but you need to do that in order to stay alive in Christ Jesus. It's not only for me to live. Let others live. Make others to live. Those who are weak, those who are suppressed, depressed, this, we need to give a helping hand. That's where Christ is all about. It's not about me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Joshua did it in order for a step to be taken. So because the people of Israel were going back, no matter what, I'm going to go ahead. Because the one who has seen the Lord, the one who has heard the Lord, the one who has heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, one who has seen God working in your lives, one who has seen God giving me everything, my substance, to live, to continue to live, will never see the things of this world or the pleasures of this world. He will see his God always. After they met with their God, they never looked back. All the characters of the Bible, they always looked up to their God. And God provided all their needs according to the riches in Christ Jesus. And that's how we must build our strong relationship with our God. Talk to him. Tell him everything. You're good, you're bad. Whatever comes in your mind, talk to him first. And that's what is our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ all about. And before we know, Isaiah 59, 2, only sin covers his face from us. Watch out, be careful on that area. He will never answer. But when we are, when my conscience is telling that I am right with my God, if I am truly sincere with my God, then assured that God will answer your needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. And he is more sensitive when you desire anything just desire, but let it be according to the will of God, for his glory, and for the extension of Christ's kingdom. I tell you in the name of Jesus, ask God in Jesus' name, it will be given. May your personal relationship with your God flourish. Consecration of Sabbath was coeval with the creation. God allowed that to function together, not only a mosaic generic code, it is not a season of stern privation, but it is a season of celebration, a day of rejoicing with your God, who himself rested and refreshed and wanted his children to be joyful. Enjoy the rest and relaxation that brings energy, that brings regeneration, that brings relaxation. Relaxation will come only when you read the word of God and pray. I tell you in the name of Jesus, go anywhere in the world, but sit in your room. The Bible on your knees, with sincere heart, spend your little time with your God and then see the difference. The whole world is yours. You can pray, but watch out. Let us be humble. With humility and in understanding, serve the Lord because that's what self-control is all about. We don't go over. We always listen. We always obey. Let the authorities take prime. It's their time because God put them into authority. And that's where we need, we need total submission. That's where the Sabbath day will put us the remembrance. Let us not be hard at it. Let us not be a heart. We still be stone after accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It, should, it, it becomes a heart of flesh after accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. Because those stony, those sinful nature has vanished when Jesus came into our hearts. And he has removed all our sinful nature. And he has given us the fruits of the Holy Spirit. He has given us the gifts. So see all things from this point of view. And that's how God expects his children to refunction, to reinstate, to reestablish ourselves on that particular day of Sabbath, which he has ordained. Mercy in communing with him as a creator. Many times we are going, five days, six days, seven days, eight days, 15 days. We are just keeping on moving. Where is the mercy? Where is the compassion? Where is the love? We are all programmed. That's why God instituted, come on, sit at my feet now at the foot of the cross, at the Lord Jesus Christ in the cross. Remember, foot of the cross is the word of God. The resurrected life of Jesus Christ transformed everything in the lives of the disciples. They were hard. They were disobedient. But once they met the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, what happened to Peter? What happened to the John? It's very important. All those who met the Lord, they will never go back to the world again. Because there is a Sabbath. Point number four. Where did these observations go? Sabbatical year is also written in the Old Testament. Every seven years. Six years you can till the ground. And on the seventh day, seventh year, leave. Just enjoy what is growing on the sixth year. Where are the agricultural lands now? They have taken away everything for real estates. Now what is the New Testament requirement? How is it possible? In the Old Testament, what happened? Every seventh year, they had to keep it holy. Every seventh year, they released the debtors. There was no tilling of the ground. God blessed the people of Israel. Land flowing with milk and honey. There's a vast difference that God's blessing upon a land and God's curse upon a land. The land will be like bronze. No more rain. Many lives are like that. Leave. Stay close to the Lord. Read the word of God and pray. Meditate upon it. He will be a rock. He will be a fortress. He will be a mighty God in whom we trust, rely and depend on. There is a year of Jubilee also mentioned. That is the seven Sabbaths into 749. And on the 50th year is a year of a Jubilee. The people of Israel have to leave that 50th year and enjoy in God's presence. Every seven years plays a vital role in a child of God. Just check your lives. It's not like six years I will do whatever I feel like and on the last day I will resubmit myself to the Lord and on the seventh year I will enjoy. No, it doesn't work that way. It's a constant relationship with ever God. Just watch out what happened to the lives of the kings. When you read kings, check on these areas. Babylonian captivity was based because for that 50 years, they never obeyed their God. God sent them into captivity. It was a terrible, that 70 years which Jeremiah prophesied was one of that. So may God enable us to understand God doesn't change. Situation, the world changed. God created everything on the sixth day. Finished. Never, nothing he created more. Man has already created Dolly, the sheep. And he's looking towards creating a man. Artificial intelligence is going on. Man is going towards that area, but God stopped. He has other plans in mind. We have to wait. What's we, what we will be, it's not yet disclosed. But we will be, be with him in glory. Amen? Yes. And that's what life is all about. Do not do anything that is not written in the word of God. Do everything what is written here. That it's in itself will take our life away. 
because there are so many things to do and we are not done it. At least obey your God, God while he is near, while his attention is with us, he's, while he is watching over us, he is taking interest in our lives, he is answering our prayers. When you see your prayers getting answered, watch out. Do not let go that relationship. That means your God is on your side. Sometimes he doesn't answer. He chastises because we are his children. He disciplines us because we are sons and daughters. So let not that confuse us in any way. Keep on doing it. But the disciplining part is not continuous. You need to enjoy with your God. That's why the Sabbath was created. That's why the time of refreshing, we need to spend our time with our God. The last point is the Sabbath rest. It is in relationship with our God. How much we spend time with our God, with ourselves, with our family, remembering God. How much do we bring Him in our day-to-day -day living? Do we thank God for each and everything that comes our way? Do we ask Him for everything? Any thought that comes before that, if you are so intimate relationship with your God, when the thought comes, tell it to your God. Before ever it enters your heart. That is the greatest relationship a man or a woman can ever have with his God. A very true relationship. He will not disown. He will not betray. Once we have accepted him as a personal savior, he will never let go of us. Unless and un otherwise, I go myself. He is so sincere, so honest with us, so faithful, so grateful, so loving. His unfailing love is beyond comprehension. Remember our God. It is in focus and cleansing of all matters in our personal life, our family life, our extended family lives, we need to bring Him in remembrance always. How many times do we remember Him? Thank God for the testimonies, how God has done mighty wonders for me. The Lord was kind to me. He gave us substance. He gave us food and water. Thank God for Him. Thank God for the oxygen that we are breathing one day it will be in the cylinder. They will sell in the cylinder. It's already started. So may God enable us to understand the truth. We are living in the end of times. It is in line with the biblical truth and the requirement of the word. God longs to have company with us. God longs to interact with us. God longs to be adored, to be honored. That he is the only living God and there is none like him, nor heaven, nor on the earth. That's where the Ten Commandments goes on to say. There is nobody like God. Only he is the only living God. That's how the first commandment starts. So let us not be weary. Let us not be ashamed to have our God as our everyone. He is more genuine than our husband. He is more true than our wives. He is more compassionate and godly than our father and mother. He is more loyal to our siblings, our extended families, friends, neighbors, and enemies also. Have him as our company because that's the only way out for us after accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. Move forward because the end of times is very near. I will complete reading from uh, Psalm 92 verses 11 to 15. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. What happens when we give our time to our God? My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. This is our victory. This is our place one day, that we will be planted near Him, and they will flourish in the courts of our God. When you bow down to your living God, Psalm 78, 
three, four, five, guarantees five generations. Go home and read Psalm 78. It's very interesting that the one person bows down, provided the father bows down or the mother bows down. It's very important. Five guarantees. It's very important. That's how our God is faithful to a thousand generations. His love passes on. So it's all our requirement that we will be in the courts of our God. It's very important. This verse is the very highest verse. They will still bear fruit in old age. Even in our earthly life, when we continue to honor the Sabbath, when we continue to stay with our God on the Sabbath days, spending time, considerable time with our God, they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. And that is how in eternity the Sabbath rest for God's people will be laid. I will read from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. In eternity, God has ordained for us the Sabbath rest. We will be with him in eternity. There is a time of enjoyment, praising our God, worshipping him and beholding him in close quarters. You prayed, you read the word, you committed your life to your God. Don't you want to see who is this Jesus? To many, he has come in a vision. To many, he has come in dreams. To many, we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's the, the only longing we have in this world. What is the goal of our life? Why at all did we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Savior? Isn't that to behold him one day? To behold our God, to behold the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. Hebrews 4, 9 to 11 reads like this. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest will also rest from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their examples of disobedience. So this is where the Hebrews is giving us a strong conviction, a strong authority. The times that we spend with our God in the Sabbath day from all rest will eventually bear fruit for us one day. So let not this disobedience cause a a situation where we'll fall short of the glory of God. Let us spend time with Him. Revelation 22, 1 to 5 reads like this. This is what the Sabbath will be looking like in the house of God, where He has written in Revelation 22, 1 to 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the lamp down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp, or a light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Amen. And this is what is the rest all about. Shall we all stand up and close in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, as a reminder for us that we need to spend more time, the one day rest that is required according to the New Testament. They gathered, they gathered at the first day of the week. And Lord, we are concerned about spending time with you, O oh God. Bless your people, O oh Lord Jesus, so that they may enjoy the sweet communion with God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the blessings of heaven may flow on each one of them. Heal them, O oh Lord, of their requirement, their emotional, their diseased situation, accidental, and Lord, their financial may be met in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you, Father. According to the word, the blessings follow when we honor our God and when we obey his precepts. 
and all their blessings will remain because when we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Thank you and praise you God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.